This is a quick video over Bayes' theorem. What we'll see with Bayes' theorem is overall it's just two given functions combined. So let's start off with just an example. So let's say we have a sack of stars and we have two people, Sal and me. Sal gets to go first and I get to go second. Now, Sal pulls out a star and he runs off. He doesn't tell me what he has, he just takes the star and runs off. So that means we don't, don't replace. Replace. Now, if Sal takes the star and runs off, that affects me. So that affects the star that I can get. But let's say I get a red star. And we're just going to do MRRM to represent me getting a red star. Now, if we know this, we know that Sal pulled out a star, we didn't get to see what it was, and he just ran off. What's the probability? What's the probability that Sal has a red star? Red star. So what I'm saying here is really we use a given function. We say what's the probability that Sal has a red star, given that I got a red star? Now how do we solve this? Usually we can just think through a given problem. We can think, okay. Let's say instead, let's say what's the probability of me getting a red star given that Sal got a red star? Whoops. Given that Sal got a red star. Well, if Sal got a red star, that means we just take out one red star and that remains, that gives us one remaining red star out of the four possible stars, so it's one fourth. But we can't do that with this problem. So how do we solve this? Well, let's just write out the given function. We know that a given function is equal to the probability of, of Sal getting a red star and me getting a red star. All divided by me getting a red star. The probability of me getting a red star. So that's a basic given function. But usually when we have a given function, we're solving for this. We're solving for that. But we don't we don't know what this is, so we can't solve for this. But we do know that the probability that Sal got a red star and I got a red star is equal to the probability of me getting a red star and Sal getting a red star. Oops, red star. These two are equal. So if we just rewrite, if we, well, if we solve for this one, which by doing that we're solving for this one since they're equal, let's say, well, how would you solve this? How would you solve that? Well, you would say, you would say this is equal to, I guess I should do it this way, this is equal to the probability of me getting a red star given that Sal got a red star. Oops, keep writing that wrong. Sal got a red star times the probability that Sal got a red star. Probability that Sal got a red star. So we can actually solve for this. This, what's the probability of Sal getting a red star? Well that's just uh, 2 out of 5. So that's two fifths. That's two fifths. Now, what's the probability that I get a red star given that Sal got a red star? Well, if we take out, well, we, that's right here. That's one fourth. One over four. So this is equal to one fourth times two fifths, which is two twentieths or one tenth. Right? One tenth. Just make sure I'm doing that. 2 out of 20, yeah, 1 tenth. So the probability that Sal got a red star and I got a red star is 1 tenth. So now we know what this is. This is 1 tenth. So now, how many different ways can I get a red star? So the probability of me getting a red star, well, that's equal to the probability of Sal getting a red star and me getting a red star. So that's one way of getting a red star. Or, so union, or, or, Sal could get a white star, and I could get a red star. So these, these are the two different ways of me getting a red star. Now, are these mutually exclusive events? Can this occur and this occur at the same time? They cannot occur. I mean, if this one occurs, this one can occur. So they are mutually exclusive. So then, we can break this into the probability of Sal getting a red star, and I'm getting a red star, red star, plus the probability 
of Sal getting a white star and me getting a red star. Whoops, it's supposed to be an M. So we know what this is. This is one tenth. We calculated up there. This is one tenth. Now what is this? What is this? Well, this is just an intersection, and we can use the given function to solve for the intersection. So this, this part right here, well, this is equal to the probability of me getting a red star, given that Sal got a white star, times the probability of Sal getting a white star. Sal getting a white star. So what's the probability that Sal gets a white star? Well, there are three white stars out of the total of five, and then the beginning. And if Sal gets a white star, so if Sal gets a white star, What's the probability of me getting a red star? Well, then there are two red stars out of the remaining four, so that's two out of four. So we just multiply that and we get, we get two fourths times three fifths, so that's six out of 20, which is equal to three over 10. Now we have one tenth here, so we just add, so we can just erase that. We get, we get one tenth plus three tenths is equal to four tenths or simply 2 out of 5. So now we know the probability of me getting a red star is 2 fifths. 2 fifths. So then, so this is equal to 1 tenth divided by 2 fifths, and that is equal to, as equal to 1 fourth. That is equal to 1 fourth. Now, we solved, we solved this without even using, well we did use Bayes' theorem, but we just, I mean I never stated it. Bayes' theorem is exactly what we did. We said the probability of event A, given that event B has occurred, is equal to the probability of event B, given that A has occurred, times the probability of A, all divided by the probability of B. That's exactly what we did. So if you move this, right there, you'll get this equation. And this is Bayes' theorem. So, that is Bayes' theorem overall.